Today, we're gonna turn this old PC into an emulation beast. It's so quick and easy, you guys. Trust me, you're in for a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to your grandma's computer. It's not super powerful. It's definitely not made for gaming. Your grandma mostly used it to look at photos of you that your mom posted on Facebook and to order cat food online. Yeah, it was sad when she died, but at least she left you her PC and her will, along with her cat and those weird dolls. So, now, I know what you're thinking. Let's sell this stuff for Captain Crunch money. Well, not so fast, because that old PC, get this, can run games. Great games. Like, thousands and thousands of great games. We're gonna turn this bad boy into an emulation beast. And you don't need to install some strange and confusing Linux stuff to get up and running with an awesome looking, easy to use retro emulation front end. You can get up and running from Windows, and it's only gonna take like 10 minutes. So go ahead and sell the cat and the dolls, but keep that PC. Cause not only is it a competent Windows 10 PC that can do Windows stuff and is gonna let you play the greatest library of games known to mankind, it'll also help you remember your grandma. It's a double whammy! So, let's see what we have here. This is a Dell Optiplex 3050 Micro Tower with an i5-7500T processor, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and an old mechanical hard drive. It's nice and small. It feels more like a little game console than a PC. I have a USB Xbox controller that I'm hoping will work well. Because I'm a tech weeb and I have some spare parts lying around, I'll be swapping out the mechanical drive for an SSD and tossing in another 8 gigabytes of memory that I stole from an old laptop. This is totally optional. You don't need to bother with upgrades if your machine has an i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM. It'll emulate everything just fine, probably. I just wanted to squeeze out the best performance out of Grandma's old PC. I'll do it for you, Grandma. Alright, well, here we are, running Windows 10. Should we try a game? Oh. Well, that's not great performance, huh? Well, nobody said this was a gaming PC. It doesn't have a dedicated graphics card after all. Thanks for nothing, Grandma! But, we don't need to have a fancy gaming PC to play games, because there are thousands of retro games that'll run amazing on this little guy. Obviously, we could install standalone emulators and manage everything ourselves from Windows, and hey, if you want to go through all that trouble and do all that, then go right ahead. But I'd rather have this. Boom! Emulation machine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Retrobat. It's a program for Windows that runs a packaged version of Emulation Station with all the emulators included. Emulation Station is a very mature emulation front end with near perfect functionality and a ton of great features. It's customizable as heck, and it's the easiest and best emulation front-end for Windows, in my humble opinion. And just look at that menu, guys! So many systems! And you can see that the games have box art and videos. And look! Everything boots up super quick and it all just works, all by itself. Just add your own games and you're good to go. And this took me like 10 minutes to set up. And, get this you guys, I'm gonna show you how to do this yourself, right now. First step is you wanna go to retrobat.ovh and download the latest version of Retrobat. It's a pretty big download because it comes with all the emulators pre-installed. Step number two, you want to install the program. Make sure you know where you're installing it, because you're going to need to go back to that directory when you add your game files. The next step is you want to copy over all your ROB files into the ROBS folder on your Retrobat install. Make sure that the ROBS go into the proper directories. I'm not going to tell you how to get your ROBS. You could Google all that yourself. There's lots of ways you could get your hands on these ROBS. Uh, also, if you have any BIOS files, you can copy them into the BIOS directory of your Retrobat install. There's a good chance you won't need any BIOS files because Retrobat comes with RetroArch installed and all the cores you need, and they have built-in BIOS files. 
but there might be a couple and if you find you come across a game that won't run without the BIOS, just download that BIOS and put it in the BIOS folder of your Retrobat installation. Okay, now you're ready to start it up and uh, open up the menu because you're going to want to turn off the background music in the front end. That's the first step I always do. By the way, the menu button is the enter button on the keyboard and uh, Z and X on the keyboard are like uh, A and B on a controller. Uh, speaking of controllers, step 5 is to configure your controller. If your controller's not by configured by default, you just go into the menu, go to configure controller, and then you just assign different buttons to different buttons on your controller. This will work for pretty much any controller, as long as your controller is uh, detected. Now that's basically it. So step six is to just test the game. Go into one of your game menus and you should see all your games uh, listed there for each of the systems as long as you put them in the correct directory. What's nice about Retrobat is it has all the emulators built in and even all the bezels and stuff are kind of there by default. So your game should run great and look great right away. And you could stop at this step if you're happy with everything, but if you want to customize stuff a little bit, Let's move on to optional, step 7. Step 7 is to download some themes for Retrobat. I prefer the Bottle Sara Club Reloaded theme, personally. And you can also download your uh, game art, which is called Scraping. There's a couple different services you could use. The one that I like to use is called Screen Scraper. You need to sign up for an account, but then you put in your info. And this is one that's good because it lets you get the videos for the games too. You can download for all your systems or just one system or whatever you want. And then you're just going to let it scrape. It'll take a while to download all this stuff. But then once you're done, you can apply your new theme. And then your Retrobat install will have a shiny new coat of paint. Lots of different themes to try, and uh, lo most of them look really good, to be honest. And then all your game art will be there too, you know, the box art of the video. And it just makes your entire Retrobat installation look really, really sharp, in my opinion. There, there's a lot to learn if you want to get more advanced. I've left a link to Retrobat website and the Retrobat FAQ. If you have any questions, then check out the documentation, because it's probably already been answered. Most of the emulators built into Retrobat are run through Retro Arch, which is kind of quirky to use. There are lots of shortcuts you could learn on your controller for things like save states and opening the menu and more advanced functions. That's way beyond the scope of this video. I just kind of wanted to show off Retrobat and get you up and running as quick as possible. So if you have any more questions, just check out the info in the uh, links below. That should help you out. Well, now that we're set up, let's play some games. We're going to see what Grandma's Optiplex 3050 Micro Tower can run. We'll start off with the low-end stuff and then work our way up. And, uh, spoiler alert, pretty much everything we're gonna try today is running really perfect. Just like Grandma would've wanted. So obviously Game Boy is gonna run fine. It's probably the lowest-end system on our list. Oh, by the way, when you're uh, in the settings in Retrobat, you can configure a whole bunch of stuff. You could disable the overlays, the bezels, and you could change the colorization and the filters and all sorts of different options for the emulator. You don't have to do it in the actual emulator itself. You could do it right from Retrobat, so it's super convenient. And moving along to some NES, we're going to apply a shader for this one, the Curvature Shader, which kind of gives it the effect of an old CRT screen with a slight curve to it and the scan lines. Some games I like to play with the, these effects enabled, sometimes I just like to play with just the pixels on the screen. You can play around with it and see whatever looks good to you. And here's some SNES, and uh, you can see that the, I put on a filter for this one. It kind of smooths out the pixels. It almost makes it like a little bit of a cell shaded look to it. There's so many different options to try, and you know, lots of people don't like it when things are kind of too far away from their retro original. I tend to agree with them. I kind of like things looking all retro-y. Moving along to Game Boy Advance, all the Game Boy Advance games are going to run perfectly fine. No issues with any of them on a system this powerful. See, even a low-end PC is way more powerful than, you know, those retro handhelds that we're all getting these days, so you'll be able to run so much stuff on even a cheap PC like this. 
onto some of the 3D systems. This is the Nintendo 64. And you can see here, I wanted to show you, you'll get a BIOS warning, but it's gonna launch perfectly fine. RetroArch has the BIOS built in, so that's more just a fail safe, and there might be some uh, systems or games where you actually need to copy over the BIOS, but most of them are gonna run fine. Speaking of running fine, take a look at this. This is running beautifully. RetroArch automatically upscales the resolution for lots of the systems, so, you know, they're gonna be a lot more crisp than the original, and you could uh, adjust the resolution right through the menu and RetroBat. You don't even need to use RetroArch's menu. Just do it at the game settings and you can select whichever resolution you want. If you want to run it at the original, or if you want to run it upscale, it makes even the, these old games look a little more modern. Moving on to some PlayStation 1, and I wanted to show you what this looked like. So RetroArch automatically applies the upscaling to PS1 games by default, but if you go through the RetroArch menu, you can change it on the fly. And for PS1 games, a couple of these older 3D systems, I like to play them at their native resolution. There's just something that feels weird about running a PS1 game at a like higher resolution when the textures of the game don't really match the resolution. Something a little bit more pure about running to get in the original configuration. This is how I like to run most of the retro 3D systems, to be honest. And here's the PSP, running full screen, uh, upscaled. This is what I actually do like to upscale. Running beautifully, <laughs> no complaints here. Even if we run a harder game, this is God of War, Chains of Olympus, it's gonna run just fine. Kind of crazy that this game that brings even the expense of retro handhelds to their knees, it's just gonna run like perfectly smooth on this dirt cheap system that we got from good old grandma. And here's Sega Saturn, Panzer Dragoon 2. I never had a Sega Saturn, so I really enjoyed going back through and trying some of these games. There's a whole bunch of really good games on this system. I like playing these at their native resolution, just like the PS1. There's just something a little bit more authentic about running them like this. Uh, Retro Battle even do the DS, and it does the, the touch screen you see at the bottom there. You can just use the mouse for that. So you play the game with your controller, and you use the touch screen with the mouse. I think you can play pretty much any DS game completely perfectly like this. No problems at all. Obviously, it doesn't fill the screen the way that a proper console game would with the vertical screens. I think there are different layouts you could experiment with where the main screen will be big and the touch screen will be small. I kind of like it like this, especially because you can see the picture of the DS or how the edges kind of feels like playing the real thing. And here's some uh, GameCube. Running no problem at all. This little PC is like a perfect little GameCube console, apparently. It's even upscaled here. I know there's any GameCube games that are gonna give you any problems on this little guy. It doesn't have a dedicated graphics card, but the graphics processor that's built into the CPU is definitely powerful enough to play some stuff, and most emulation will just run perfectly fine on it, to be honest. And speaking of running fine, here's some PlayStation 2. This one, I don't think this one's upscaled, and I can't really tell if there's some frame drops. There might be. This game is kind of a choppy game, I remember, on the PlayStation 2. It did run at the best frame rate on there anyways, so kind of hard to tell. I probably should have tested some more games, but this one's playing at a playable frame rate, so I'd be happy playing this game, and probably anything else you want to run on the PlayStation 2 will run just fine. And I save the best for last, the retro console that brings every emulation system to its knees, the Atari 2600. We're running Boxing here, which is probably the best game that's ever been made. Maybe you'll disagree, but I know you'll do, because I mean, look at it. The graphics are so good, it basically looks like real life. It looks like a real boxing match. And the gameplay is just so deep and so immersive. You know, when you're playing this, you really feel like you're throwing punches against a formidable opponent. Give him a left and a right, and oh, you get so into it. I'm telling you guys, when I play this game, I feel like a real boxer. I feel like I could take on the world. Your grandma was a special lady. Not only did she give birth to your mom, the details of which I'll leave up to your imagination, she also had a kind heart and cared deeply about you. She was there for your first birthday. She sent you graded cards on Christmas with checks for $15 that your mom had to put into your bank account. She always clicked like on the photos of you on Facebook. And she loved you from the bottom of her heart. You were a bright spot in her otherwise bleak existence. And most importantly, she died. And because of that, you got a free PC. 
So now you can play Atari, NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Sega, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Blame, and a ton of other retro game systems, and all it cost you was a grandma. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below. What do you think of Retrobat? Is this your first time hearing about it? Do you have any tricks or tips for a Retrobat or running emulation front ends or on Windows? Or do you have a dead grandma you could tell me all about her? I'm sure she was a real sweetheart. I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if your dead grandma didn't leave you a PC to turn into an emulation machine. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.